at this time. Each presenter will have two minutes to present their closing statements. And so now presenting his closing statement is Dr. Guyverson. Science has been described as a fanciful story. Our theories of origins have been described as having been concocted. Careful predictions about what things might have looked like have been described as nothing more than artistic license. This description of the scientific community is necessary in order for us to be a creationist. We have to believe that the scientific community is populated by frauds, liars, people who are telling a fanciful story and concocting stories with absolutely no evidence because somehow they are hostile to belief in God and don't want uh, us to be accountable for our actions. But this was a view of the scientific community that I accepted as a teenager that I acquired from reading creationist literature. And the reason why I moved away from that position was because as I became a scientist myself, I began to realize that the scientific exercise is one of enormous integrity. Science would not be any fun at all if it was all about concoction and artistry. Science is only fun because it is the search for the truth. And I have known many, many scientists in my life. I would have never known a single one of them to be doing anything that I would call concocting. Okay, they are working diligently, they have to get a lot of education, they're poorly paid, they don't get a lot of fame uh, from their jobs, but it is really fun to look closely and humbly at nature and try to figure, figure out what is true about the world. And the story of origins that we have is a powerful, all-encompassing explanation that has multiple lines of evidence that come together to suggest that the story that I told you tonight is true in outline form, although we are certainly developing better understandings of it. I had answers to the many things that he said I did not. What I did not have was the 45 minutes that it would have taken me to provide uh, those answers. Uh, but there are so many independent lines of evidence that have converged on the same uh, explanation. Now evolution is certainly a complex theory. Things are changing radically. Uh, we can't be quoting uh, geneticists from 1963, as Dr. Galuza did, because this is a field which is in absolutely revolutionary change, even as we speak uh, today. But the scientific community is moving slowly and fitfully and with integrity uh, in the direction that, uh, that I have outlined uh, tonight. And as Christians, we need to embrace that as God's work of creation, not as the uh, concoction of a lot of frauds. Uh, thank you, Dr. Guyverson. Dr. Galuzzi, you have two minutes for your closing statement. Well, in Dr. Guyverson's closing statement, he actually brought up a brand new argument that we would believe that scientists are a bunch of frauds and liars, and I wish I could respond to that during my rebuttal. Let me try to take 60 seconds and summarize it. Back in the early 1930s, over 100 years ago, the vast majority of scientists believe that we should purify the human race by eliminating the unfit genes and by saving the fit genes. And people like us who were in the minority were laughed at, marginalized, and ridiculed that we were not scientists. Our papers weren't published in journals, and we weren't invited to international conferences. And the vast, vast majority of scientists, the establishment of the day, said that we need to forcibly sterilize human beings. And by 1931, in the United States of America, 31 states had legalized forced sterilization under the scientific guise of eugenics based on what the vast majority of scientists said, and over 70,000 Americans were forcibly sterilized. Now, there's an, there is an obvious answer that scientists can be dreadfully wrong, totally wrong, and the minority view can be completely stamped out. This is the fact. And I just want to speak to you as brothers and sisters in Christ. We went through the evolutionary argument point by point and refuted all of their main lines. We confirmed the scriptures over and over again. And there is a tremendous pressure on Christians today due to a fear of man 
to try to meld our message with the message of the one that's going to try to kill Christianity. And it is, there, it is such a tremendous pressure that people really can't hardly resist it. But let me urge you to resist it at all costs. Because the very thing that we would do to gain respect in the eyes of the world is the very thing that will lose our respect in the eyes of the world. You slit your throat by doing such a thing. And you know, brothers and sisters, there is something totally irresistible about a Christian who believes exactly what they say they believe. I'm told of the story of, of Thomas Kuhn, who was a skeptic, listening to George Whitfield preach. And one of his fellow skeptics came up to George Whitfield and pumped him on the shoulder and said, hey, I thought you didn't believe the gospel. And he looked at him and he says, but that man does. Let's be that man. Thank you, Dr. Galuza. Thank you, Dr. Giverson. Let's go ahead and give them one more uh, round of applause here. Thank you.